this is Veronica from So It's Themes, and welcome to my podcast. It has been a while since I've recorded. Things have been just a little bit crazy and hectic around here. Um, when things started shutting down with the pandemic uh, back in March of 2020, uh, I kind of lost my steam. I think a lot of people did. Um, I was also experiencing some different technical issues, trying out different things that just were not working. I have an older laptop that does not really want to keep up with the different ways of recording things. And uh, so I was having a lot of issues with that. So we're going to stick with my laptop and do the recording through the camera. The problem with that is it does create a little bit of a grainy image and not quite as bright as it could be, but we'll do what we can. All right, I wanted to take some time when I didn't have my kids with me and a relatively quiet household to be able to just chat with you about yarny stuff. That's what this podcast is going to be about. Um, the most of my time I spend sewing, and it is mostly business sewing. I don't get a lot of time to do other kinds of sewing. So my downtime projects are involving yarn. And I've got a few things I want to show you and some things I want to talk about. So first, let me talk about a book that I bought. I don't think I've mentioned this one before. Um, no, in fact, I know I have it. My daughter's birthday, my youngest one had a birthday in May, and she is in love with dragons, with things mythicals. She's always talking about mythicals and mythical world. So I wanted to make her a gift, and I found this book at Joanne's unicorns, dragons, and more. Fantasy Amigurumi. <laughs> I have such a hard time with that word, but it's little animals and creatures. But I got this book and I got it because of this pattern. Um, let me find it. Oh, there it is. Because of Drake the Dragon. I just thought he was adorable. And so I got the book and I bought some yarn. Um, the yarn that I purchased was Big Twist Yarn. I thought I had it here. I don't. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, I also, in the process, almost knocked my laptop over. So it's a good thing I stopped recording. But I'm back now and I'm going to show you um, for the dragon that I made, uh, the pattern called for um, a sport weight yarn um, or a DK. But I found uh, the perfect colors and it was the big twist value yarn. Got that at Joann's. I got it in the yellow and then the green. I think they just call it yellow and green. Okay. This one is Varsity Gold. And this green one, it's called Light Green. Um, basically, this is, it is a number four, basically a worsted weight and it's um, acrylic. So it can be washed and uh, it's a little bit thicker than what the yarn is calling for, but not too much. The The thing with knitting things such as the toys, the Amiger Rumi, <laughs> um, if you're using a thicker yarn and maybe a little bit bigger needle or a hook, all it does is it makes the bigger toy. So I worked on that uh, pretty solid for a week. The pattern I am going to tell you was fantastic. This book is a, um, a compilation of different artists, uh, but this pattern, it's called Drake the Dragon, and it was designed by 
Mohi Mohi Design, which is Janine Holmes. Um, her instructions were fantastic. I didn't have a single problem throughout the whole project. And I am a crocheter that always has problems. I have a very hard time figuring out where to put my hook on some of the things and trying to understand fully what the instructions are telling me. Crochet is not my go-to craft. Knitting is what I enjoy doing. Knitting I understand and I really enjoy doing that. Crochet is a little bit more of a chore for me. <clears throat> but this pattern was so well written. And here he is. I love him. I love the way he turned out. Um, the pattern called for the, um, the, like the glass safety eyes, but I don't have, I didn't have any. I didn't want to go out to the store and try to find some. So I just did embroidery on there with the yarn and I really like it that way. Um, my daughter loves this, but <laughs> so cute. So here's this little dragon. Um, here's his wings. The wings were the most difficult part. Um, it, it was just, um, it was just fussy to, to make the wings work, but so well worth it. And here's his long tail, his little haunches here and toes. <laughs> I love it. Um, oh, here, and here we go. The, there's the back of the dragon. My daughter loves this. This is a perfect cuddle size actually for him. And his arms are nice and floppy. She loves to just walk around with him and she sleeps with him all the time. So this is Drake the Dragon. I highly recommend this pattern. Um, once again, it was in this book, Unicorns, Dragons, and More. And really loved it. My, let's see, that was my eight year old. She turned eight. So that was what her project, um, her craft was that I made from that. Um, in looking through this book, my oldest daughter then saw a pattern that she really liked. And it's the first one in this book. It's Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster. So this one I am actually currently working on right now. Since it's in this book, I'm going to go ahead and talk about this one. Um, so I've got Nessie that I'm going to be working on. This is from a different artist. The artist for this one, it's designed by Patchwork Moose. Um, the artist's name is Katie E. Hancock. Um, I am having more issues with this pattern. This is turning out typical for crochet for me in that um, I'm not fully understanding every step. And on some of them, it's partly my fault is I will read a line of instruction and start doing it, but I need to read the whole step because it uh, I'm crocheting in the round and I will crochet a part in the round and then the next part says when you get to stitch 15 or when you get halfway through put a marker. So that means I have to go back and I have to recount or look to kind of eye where that would be. Some of the things are uh, saying instead of an actual stitch count of where to put a marker saying halfway or in the middle of something so I'm having just a little bit of a problem on that. It, it doesn't quite hold my hand quite as much as I'm going through the project. But for this one, I am using, well, I'm using some yarn. This yarn um, I had gotten from a Knit Crate subscription. And I don't have the ball band. I have no idea what it is. But it is a fingering weight yarn. And it has a sparkle in it. Oh, look at how that sparkle's coming out. I just love it. I wasn't, when, when I, this yarn came in, I, I have the sock subscription. So all the yarn that I get from the Knit Crate is uh, sock weight. 
but I wasn't immediately captured in the idea of making socks. Since I only get one skein, I wasn't really sure what to do. My daughter saw it and loved it and said, this would be perfect for Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster. And so I'd have to agree with her on that one. Um, since it's a sock weight, it is a little bit smaller than the yarn that it's called for. So this is going to end up being a little bit smaller. But here is the head so far. And you can see there's sparkle on that. Um, what I have going on right here, I am using, oh dear, just a minute. I'm dropping my hook. And do I need to put, yeah, let me get my hook back in. I don't have a stitch marker on that part. Um, for the accent parts on Loch Ness Monster for the, the eyes and just the different parts, I'm using this yarn. It's Shawl and a Cake by Lion Brand. Um, and it's got just, woo, let me figure out. Okay, it's got some really nice sparkle in there again. It really shimmers. Um, and so the, the yarn is kind of a thinner yarn and I'm working on, this is just part of the eyebrow right now. Um, this yarn, what size, it says it's a four. Um, it's not really, it, it's closer to a finger wing weight. They say it because, uh, it does have some, um, variation in the weight of it. Um, some of it is a little bit thicker, some of it's uh, a little bit thinner, um, but overall it's closer to a fingering weight. So I'm going to have a little bit of a variation on the accent pieces. They'll probably be a little bit larger, but I think it'll still work out just fine. The problem I have with this yarn though, is I'm having a hard time seeing where my stitches are and where I need to put my hook. So it's going a lot slower to do such as this part here. I'm going in the round and I'm really struggling with where my hook is going. So I think there's a lot of guesswork going in on this one. I will get it close enough and it will be something that I can put together and she will love it. So I'm having a lot of fun making little Nessie, the Loch Ness mon monster. So that's what I'm actually working on right now. Um, in January, I was part of, um, a kind of a challenge. There is a podcast called Grocery Girls Podcast and two sisters, they do tons of knitting, some crochet, but mostly knitting. And they had, they have a yearly challenge going on, um, where it's just, they have a sock of the month and they have a different theme for each month. And they also encourage you to try, if you can, to knit a sock every month. And then you'd have, at the end of the year, you'd have a pair of socks or for every month. So you'd have 12 pairs of socks. I thought I'd be able to do that. No. But I did, in January, get to finish a pair of socks. And I don't have a sock blocker. But... I've worn these um, when they just come out of the wash. They're really wrinkly, but I have worn these recently. So they're, they're not all wrinkly, but this, um, I'm trying to remember the theme for this one was doing something with a mosaic pattern. And so this was a pattern. Um, the yarn is from Socks That Rock, I believe. And the brown was one I, I didn't have a ball band for it. It came in a bag of yarn that someone gave to me. But the variegated color is from a skein of uh, yarn from Socks at Rock. And uh, the pattern is from Paint Box Yarns, I believe. Um, I cannot remember the name of the pattern. And I don't know where it is right now. Um, but I made these socks as part of the challenge for the month of January. And 
was entered into a drawing and I was one of the winners. So I was very excited. Not only do I have some wonderful socks that I love, they're just a little short, but I had a lot of fun working the pattern. They fit really well. Um, I could have made them maybe two rows longer on the foot and they probably would have fit just, just that much better. But um, I was one of the winners. They drew several names for that month. And I had the option of either getting, excuse all the wrinkling down here, I'm losing my bags. Um, <coughs> I had the option of either getting a pattern or just getting a goodie bag. Well, I love goodie bags. So I opted for the goodie bag. And this is what came in, and I was just blown away. First, um, let me put that over to the side there. Look at this. A little notion bag. I love this. It's so pretty. It's just a simple little bag, muslin in there. It's got a little zip. Close that. But I'm finding I have several projects that I've been starting and um one set of notions <laughs> so i'm i want to get notion bags for each of my project bags so this is perfect now i just need to get notions to fill it but here's a little notions bag and then this is um a little let's make sure it's a little notebook on keeping track of my yarn projects. It says, yes, I slay knit and crochet. I love it. That's perfect because I do knit and crochet. And then within, I'm gonna, every page is basically the same, but it has a spot for being able to put all the information for projects that I'm working on. So this is really great. And this is something that I should start working on because I never remember to really, well, obviously can't remember everything about these socks. Um, and that was just January. That wasn't that long ago, but I've already forgotten. But with this uh, little notebook, then I can put all of the information of the yarn name, the brand, weight, fiber content, the size of the yarn, um, the amount that that I have in ounces and grams and yards. Um, it even has the cost, if I want to keep the cost of what, it, what I have there. Um, and just all the basic information for where I found the yarn for the project. And then it doesn't have a lot of room for the projects. It's, it's just this one line here. But I actually um, am getting better at putting my projects on my Ravelry page. So with the Ravelry page, I'm not very good at putting all the information about the yarn, partly because it's it's just a lot of extra work on there. But it's really easy for me to just write things down in a notebook. I'm much more a paper and pencil type of girl. I know I'm old. I'm 45. So yes, I'm a paper and pencil type of girl. This is perfect. I do use Ravelry to keep pictures and photos of my projects. And I like having that there. And then I can visually see what I've been doing. I can also save patterns that are there. So I really like that. But this was in my little package. But wait, there's more. Um, there were a couple of little, uh, pins too that you can put on your project bags. This one is craft hard, stay warm. Get out of the glare. Craft hard, stay warm. It's got a little polar bear on there, which is really cute. Oh, and then this one is of the grocery girls who sent this little package out. And then let me open this up. So I can open all this stuff up now that I'm showing you. I've been keeping it together because I've been wanting to show you, but I didn't want to lose everything and have it all dispersed. This here 
um, our little stitch markers. But aren't they pretty? They're just real simple little silver rings, and some of them have little beads on them. Woo! There we go. Little stitch markers. That's really pretty. And this one is from, these are from Black Pearl Magic. It has the Etsy right there on the bottom. It says, your magic, own it. <laughs> and then, final thing is they also sent this beautiful skein of yarn. It's um, got a, it's a black and purple and um, going into grays and uh, the colors that all kind of come in between. This one, let's see, it's from Lady Dye Yarns. It's 100% merino and it's DK weight. And it says it's machine washable. So I'm, I'm not really sure what I'm doing with this one, but my, my thought is um, of doing a hat. And I might, I might get um, a little poof ball put on there. But isn't that pretty? Or I might do, oh, I might do, um, uh, I have a hat pattern for, I think it's crochet, to do a messy bun hat. So that my, <laughs> this bun could stick outside of the hat. Yes, today was a messy bun day. And um, it would have taken too long to do something different. So you have me as I am. But all of this came as my prize for being part of the little, just the, the sock challenge. So thank you, Grocery Girls. I love it. I, I honestly, I was in tears when I opened it. Came at a perfect time. I really needed that boost. So this was perfect. I love this. Let's see. What else? I made one project, but I, I don't have the pattern and it was already given away. Um, someone asked, they saw Drake that I had made. Sweet little Drake. They saw Drake and wanted to know if I could uh, crochet a turtle and they had a pattern for it. So I crocheted a turtle and came out so cute and but it's gone. I do have a photo of it on my Ravelry page so you can always look at Ravelry. Um, you know, I don't know what my name is on there. I think it's Mrs. Johnson. I think that's how you can find me there. Okay, what's next? Uh, like I had mentioned, I'm part of the Knit Crate subscription. And so I just want to show you a couple of things that I've gotten from them. Um, it has been a while. It's a monthly subscription that I get. And I cannot remember what I've shown you guys. Um, this one is a brown. It's really soft. It's it's kind of it's a it's a little bit of a darker chocolatey brown than what is kind of showing up right there. Kind of washing out just a little bit. But this is Audine Wool's Luxury Sock. And it's 75% merino, superwash merino, 15% nylon, and 10% cashmere. It is so soft. These ones I will be making socks. Um, it has how many? 439 yards. So it's 100 grams. Um, I usually make myself long socks, but I might do some shorter socks and then try to get some socks for my daughter out of this. I will have to see. I might pair this with something else also. Um, because usually I've only been knitting for me. And it might be nice to start knitting for the other people in my family. But I love those. Um, and then this was another uh, month that came in. And this is a purple and black stripe in there. See, it's kind of twisted 
in there together. This one is also another, let's see, yeah, you can see there, you see the, the strands are, oop, I'm trying to show you just one strand. See, that's kind of twisted around there, that purple and black. And this one is the, boy, some of these names, my brain just has a hard time with. Vidalalana, Vidalana, Vidalana, I don't know. That's what it is. I'm going to show you and then you can say it however you want. But this is called Wisteria and it's 40% Merino, 40% Peruvian Highland wool, 20% nylon. And there's 100 grams here, 436 436 yards. I'm not sure what I want to do with this one. It's pretty. It's soft. Not, not nearly as soft as that other. That it's the cashmere in this one. Ooh. All right. And then with knit crate, they send, um, pattern books with each of their subscriptions. So these are the pattern books that came in. Um, and then I had a pen, but I, it just went flying out of my hand and it's down on the ground somewhere. I'm not bending down to get it. But with this other one, here I go wrinkling again. Um, I had this open one time, but it's not going to happen again. Oh, there we go. I found the opening. It's a little felt, almost like a wallet. It's just something small. It's cute. What I thought would be really fun is to embroider some designs on there. I've been kind of wanting to do some embroidery. So um, I'll look through my um, embroidery book and see what kind of designs and do some embroidery around here. I don't know what yet, but that's the first thing I thought of when I opened it is I want to embroider something. I don't know what I would use this for, but it's cute. I like it. I have another knit, knit crate subscription to show you. Now this one, it's just plain undyed yarn because what they did, they paired up with um, someone who is from Chem Knits Creations. And you can kind of, there she is. And she does dying. Her name is Rebecca. I'm just looking at it right here. Rebecca Brown of Chem Dye Knits. And they paired up with her for this month. And so what they did is uh, linked to uh, her YouTube channel where she has instructions. So they sent this yarn and a zip tie to be able to hold their yarn because you'll put it in there so you can bring it in and out and not get your hands dyed. And then Kool-Aid. <laughs> she does uh, dyeing with Kool-Aid. And so super simple and looks super fun. So what I'm actually going to do is I think I'm going to do a partial dyeing where I do part of part of the skein with the red Kool-Aid with cherry. Cherry is the flavor I got. And then I'm going to look through because we've got some other Kool-Aids. Uh, we've had them forever. But I might pair it with maybe a purple um, or see if we've got uh, a green Kool-Aid and dye the other side. So I'm excited to do that. This is nice and soft, too. I like this yarn. Um, and in that one, with each of the Knit Crate subscriptions, they will send you the yarn and a pattern. Right now, that they don't send a pattern book, but they have a link to patterns online because they're reducing how much is being sent out at this time uh, because of the virus pandemic. I'm not going to go into that, but they, they've adjusted things a little bit. So in this one, this, okay, I love little paper things. Okay, so here is, let me come over here. It's a little, well, first I opened it first. Okay, so here's a little pad, it says Knit Crate. And then open it up. It's little sticky notes. <laughs> it's cute. Oops. So we have just 
the regular sticky notes and then the little the little tabs. So I just thought that was super cute. Like that. Okay. There's that. I talked about that. Okay. Now, today was another knit crate mailing came in, but I haven't opened it yet. All I did was open it enough to get things out because wrinkle, wrinkle, wrinkle. So here is my bag. Most you, when I first started the knit crate, it came in boxes, but they've reduced it. They have reduced staff, whatever. So in this bag is my next one. So I, uh, I don't subscribe to one particular, um, colorway. They have, um, I can't remember, but they have several different, um, themes that you can subscribe to. Uh, one is neutrals. One is basically um, vibrant, bright colors. Uh, there is another one. I cannot remember what it was, but I choose Surprise Me. Basically, it's whatever whatever you want to put in, put it in there. So, ooh, ooh. <gasps> okay. Look at the colors on this. Oh, my goodness. Ah, I love these colors. Look at that. We've got, we've got the nice reds goes into really dark reds, the burgundy into a little bit more of the orange tones. And then in this beautiful peachy coral, oh, this is pretty. This one, oh golly, it's the name again. Vitalana. Vitalana? Vitalana? I don't know. But this one is called Sizzling Sunset. Yes, it's beautiful. Oh, look at those colors. Look at that. So pretty. Um, this one is 80% Peruvian Highland wool, 20% nylon. Um, and this one is hand wash only. So I will have to make sure that I am aware of that. I made the mistake of not, not paying attention to a pair of socks that I knit using wool and threw them in the wash and the dryer and they no longer fit. So I will have to be careful with this one because I don't want that to happen again. But this, this yarn, it says it's fingering weight. It feels just a little bit thicker than some of the others. Just a little bit. I think it's because it's the wool and, and into my hands it feels thicker, but it's really nice and squishy. It's not super soft. I mean, it is, but it has that wool feel and you can definitely feel the wool in that. But oh, that's nice. Woo. I'll have to figure out what to make out of that. That's so pretty. Oh, I like that. Okay. Let's see what else is in here because they always send something. Okay. This is their little card getaway 2020. <laughs> We're not getting away to anywhere. It's all closed. Um, but it has a download link for the patterns. Of course, I'm not going to show that closely because you want to know the pattern. You can get a subscription. And then here is the little doodad or the extra little something or other that comes in here. So I'm going to open this up and we have got I'm going to have to look to see what this toadstool does. I don't know. That is a confusion to me. It must do something or be used for something, but I'm not sure what. Looks interesting. It's cute. If anyone knows, you can send me a message and say, lady, this is what it is. Because <laughs> I'm clueless. It's cute though. But it doesn't say on here um, in my quick perusing what that could be. So I'll have to look up to see what that is. So 
that is what's happening right now in my Yarny world. I have had some other things. I have a couple of projects that are on the go right now, but I'll wait on that. Um, I think there's been enough with just showing you the different yarns that I've gotten. Um, I have a lot of fun looking at it and playing with it. And <laughs> right now I'm getting glare in my eyes because some people are moving in across the street, so they're moving cars around and things like that. So <laughs> the sun's reflecting off of them into me. <laughs> but that is what's happening in my yarny world. Um, I do also do some sewing, but right now none of it is super exciting. It's just been some uh, alterations for dresses, uh, very simple and very boring cushion for someone. Um, but I'll be getting to more uh, exciting stuff, I hope. Uh, I have some other projects that I'd like to do. But I hope you enjoyed seeing the different yarns that I've been able to get um, basically since the beginning of this year through my subscriptions. And I'm excited to see different projects that come out of them, and I hope that you will enjoy seeing them too. I have a bunny running around behind me. <laughs> Let's see if he wants to say hello. There he is. This is our little bunny. Yep. Can you say hello? There we go. He doesn't, oh, he doesn't like to be held too much. He's a little wild thing. But anyway. <laughs> excuse the kind of scattered uh, report today, but it feels good to be back. So I hope to have this a little bit more regular and I'm working on a schedule and just trying to uh, have something more interesting <laughs> to show you <laughs> in, in the future. All right. Thanks for stopping by and Remember, if you like what you see or you're interested to see more, subscribe down below and I will be back at another time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.